Hello and welcome to this introduction to using ICPSR. ICPSR stands for Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Science, or Social Research, sorry. And it is a database that contains uh, 7,000 plus data sets, which are um, raw data in the general areas of political and social research that are available to ICPSR member institutions and students and faculty and staff at those institutions to use in their own research. Um, so the goal of this session is to get you started on exploring ICPSR and understanding data set records, what's the difference between public use data and restricted use data and so on. So right now I'm on the library's homepage which is library.gsu.edu and I know I want to access the database called ICPSR so I'm going to scroll below this first section here and then I will see there is a section that says databases by name that I can click on the I because that is the beginning of the database called ICPSR and then I'm going to access ICPSR and if you're off campus, um, what will typically happen before you are brought to the actual ICPSR page is that you'll be prompted to log in with your GSU campus ID and password. You may notice as well that there is a banner at the top here telling you um, that due to uh, COVID-19 and most people working remotely and off campus, ICPSR is recommending that you also consider logging in th through something like the campus VPN to make sure you're getting full access to the database. So I've actually already logged into the VPN. I will show you that I have done that. If you're not sure what the VPN is, um, you can find other information on the GSU technology page about what that is. But I am logged in here. It shows me that I'm um, connected. So I am set to go. So this is the ICPSR homepage. Um, the big thing that you have to do basically before you can do any, um, get any access to the data in ICPSR is you need to make what ICPSR calls an a My Data account. So to be able to do that, um, I'm going to click on this link here. It says login slash create account. I'll try to make this just a little bigger just so maybe it'll be a little easier to see. So if you've not made a My Data account before you would need to scroll down and here you would see it says create account and you would click on here and then it asks for various information. The key thing for this email address piece is that you should put your GSU um, email address in here. Um, but here's all the information to ask for and then once you've completed it you can click submit to then have created your new account. I already have an account so I'm going to go back to that first my data page and I am going to log in with my ICPSR account and password. Great. So now you will see I am logged in and here is my name. So I am ready to um, begin exploring ICPSR. Um, so this first page of uh, picture you're seeing here is University of Michigan. There's an M up in the corner. <laughs> that is the location of the ICPSR office. Um, so what we're going to first do is explore some of this find data area here. So I'm going to click on find data and then I'm going to click on find data again. And it brings me to their main find data page. So I want to um, first look some at the areas where I can browse for data. So I will come back to keyword searching for data, but for starters, um, I want to go into this browse area, particularly because I just want to show you one, browsing by different topic areas might be a good way to access data. 
um, in ICPSR, but I also want to um, kind of expose you to some of the things that you're going to probably encounter while you're looking in ICPSR. So first I'm going to start browsing by topics. So right here it says topics. I'm going to click on that. And you'll see that ICPSR has kind of grouped or classified many of their data sets into some of these broad topic areas. So these topic areas are um, arranged alphabetically on the page so you can explore, for example, economic behavior and attitudes. What are some of the um, data sets associated with that topic area. For my purposes to demonstrate some other features, I'm scrolling down and I want to look into this topic area of um, the uh, mass political behavior in attitudes. So let me, I'm going to click on this button that says view more so that I can see that within that topic area there are lots of subtopic areas that I can then click on if I want to focus on specific um, subtopics. If I just want to see everything that they put under the main topic of mass political behavior, I can click on that. And it will bring me all the search results or all the data sets that match that topic area or have been tagged with that topic area. Now, before I start looking at some of my results, I also want to point out that on the left hand side, there are various filters that you can use to hone in on certain types of data. Um, there are lots of filters. I've encourage you to explore all the various filters, but the key one I want to point out right now is this one that says restriction type. So I just clicked on the arrow to expand that. And it shows that there are two um, types of data generally in um, ICPSR in terms of you're ready to access to them or not. So those that say public use are data sets that are available for immediate download. So for the purposes, particularly of a class, like a one semester class, I would recommend that students would want to limit themselves to public use data sets because you're going to, once you have that My Data account, you're going to be able to download that data right away and be able to use it for class projects. In contrast, and I will talk even more about um, this data later, there is restricted use data sets in ICPSR and those um, require a special process to get access to them. And again, I'll talk a little bit maybe about that later, but generally speaking for a semester long class, if you see a data set that says it's restricted use data, there is not much point in you thinking that you're going to be able to use that data because it typically will require a very um, involved process that has to have a faculty member involved to request it. That is just not really feasible for a semester class. Now if you were looking for data, restricted use data, maybe for a master's thesis or an honors thesis or a dissertation um, and you have more time to plan and go through the process of applying for and getting access to that data, then you know I would say go for it. But if it's strictly for a semester long class, it's not worth your time. <laughs> um, so I just want to point those two restriction, or sorry, this restriction type filter out. But again, there are other filters on the side that you may um, explore to help you hone in on data that you're looking for. So um, on the right hand side, these are all the data sets that have been tagged with that topic of mass um, political behavior or whatever exactly it was. Um, currently they are sorted alphabetically by title. Now I'm going to use this sort by area here to um, resort them by time period. So I'm trying to bring by doing that the more current data 
that's been added to the top. So now you can see that, so this data set at the top called AP VoteCast United States 2018, and it was loaded or put into ICPSR in 2020. So it's the most current data tagged with this particular topic area. Um, you can click on any of these then to explore the different uh, data sets of interest to you. I'm going to go to one specific one right now to get a use it to orient you to what you're going to see in an ICPSR data set record. And the um, the one I'm going to use here it is is this this one called the American Identity and Representation Survey from 2012 and its ICPSR unique identifier number is 36410. So I'm going to click on that to go into the data set record. So it pops me into the data set record. Um, here's the title again of that data set. Tells me who the principal investigators for that were. Now, if you're wondering, well, what does that mean? There's a little question mark that I can click on to give me a basic understanding of what principal investigator is. Basically, it's the person who headed up the project to collect this data. Um, and then I start getting into this area where there are, in the main record area, there are separate tabs here that will show me different portions of this record. So I'm going to highlight some of these tabs at, um, to give you a sense of what you might find there and how they'll be useful to you. At a glance um, tab here is the area where you're going to find your main summary of the data set. So here this is telling me this data set called American Identity and Representation Survey 2012 is um, a survey that was designed to investigate whether having psychological connections to particular groups, for example, um, racial, ethnic, and national origin groups, and perceptions of discrimination lead to alienation from the structure and operation of representative democracy in the United States. It's a mouthful. Um, but that's kind of the basic description. Then there's more information here. Um, and I'll show you in a moment where you can get even more information about the, uh, the data set. But this gives you your first kind of summary of what you're going to find in here. Um, here is the citation for the data set. So if you would decide to use this in a class project or in your thesis or in a dissertation, this is where um, this is a citation that you would use to properly credit that you use this data. Um, this area called subject terms actually might come in handy if you're trying to find, um, want to browse around for other data sets uh, on certain topics. So for example, it has a subject term of political representation, so I might click on that. And if that's a topic area I'm interested in, it's going to take me to other data sets that have been tagged with that subject term. Um, I can get a sense of, you know, where was this data collected? So it was collected in the United States. Uh, if I can expand some of these other areas like scope of project or methodology to get a sense of, you know, how was the data collected, what kind of survey tech, um, sampling techniques they used and so on. So the at a glance tab is kind of your main um, area to find out more about the data set to get your first sense of is this a data set that I'm even going to want to use. If at that point you want to learn more, if we go to the next tab called the Data and Documentation tab, so I just clicked on Data and Documentation tab, this is showing me the um, data files that are part of this data set. So this particular data set is fairly simple in that there is just one data file. Some data sets in um, ICPSR will have multiple um, files or compartments. And I should say it's actually one folder that might contain multiple files, but those files would include things like, if I want to see, if I click on this download button, 
they're going to include things like the code book, which is a PDF that we could use to learn more about the kinds of questions that were asked in, and um, get uh, frequency distributions for each of the variables and so on. And then we have the ability to download in different software as to whatever software we're interested in using. And there's a separate documentation PDF, a separate questionnaire PDF. What will appear here may differ widely depending upon the data set. Um, so you're not always necessarily going to see the same thing here. But if this at this point I was already ready to jump in and be like, well, I want to see um, the code book. I want to see uh, the questionnaire. I want to see the data. Now that I have already logged in or created and logged into my data account, this data, I should be able to click on here. Um, I'm going to choose this data option because that's the software I'm going to use to analyze this data. So I'm going to click on data. It will bring up the terms of use for using data in ICPSR. So I will read this thoroughly and then I will scroll to the bottom and say I agree to the terms of use. And then it will start downloading my data and it will download it in or the data set in a zipped file because there are multiple files in there. So I'm using Chrome so here's the zipped file folder. I'm going to click on it to open it. Because I'm working with a zip, zipped file, I'm going to click the Extract All option and extract it from the zipped file. So now I have just a regular um, file here. So you can see it has a file folder. This is ICPSR 36410. So that 36410 is the unique ID number for this particular data set in ICPSR. I'm going to open that folder. It has some weird looking files here that frankly, I'm just going to kind of ignore these and then open this other folder called DS0001. And then within that folder, finally, I will get to the more pertinent files that I need. So there's the data file. So if I'm ready to open it in Stata and begin um, exploring the data, I can double click to open this. I have to have Stata installed on my computer in order to do so. Um, there's also a Stata do file, which is a syntax file that if you're familiar with Stata, well, it can help you with working with that data. And then there are the um, code book, documentation, and questionnaire files. So um, I'm going to open the documentation PDF file to show you kind of what that's going to look like. So here is this documentation file. And there is a, it's not the most visible over here, a um, kind of bookmark to explore this. But you can see that this PDF, for example, if I want to find out more about the study design and documentation, I can pop to that part of the documentation file and it's going to give me the information that I need to understand to um, really use this data. So I need to know about sample sizes. I need to know so I scroll to another page about some of the data description. Um, I'm going to kind of scroll through. There's lots of information in here. I probably scrolled a little too far, but this whole section I'm in here right now talks about the sampling. So this documentation file is going to be important to look at a bunch of, uh, to understand the data, to work with the data. This documentation file actually includes as appendices, the questionnaire and the code book, which are also two separate PDF files that I downloaded. But if I go to the questionnaire, for example, and I'll blow this up a little bit, I can see the, what questions were asked to people. So here's like one of the first questions. Do you prove or disprove the way your own representative in the U.S. House of Representatives has been handling his or her job? And they were asked, you know, given the options of to say approve or disapprove. And this is telling us that in our data set, um, those categories, those nominal categories will be coded with these numeric numbers to help us do statistical analysis. So if somebody were to answer, 
I approve, then the data set, they would actually be given a value one. And if they were to have answered, I disapprove, they would have been given a value two. So that's the questionnaire. If I pop to the code book, I'm going to kind of see that what I'm going to get is basically a duplication of some of the questions that were just asked. So here's that question I think, uh, yes, that I was just looking at. Do you approve or disapprove the way your own representative in the U.S. House of Representatives has been handling his or her job? And then here it shows me again if somebody said, it's not letting me highlight that, <laughs> if, um, if, if they said approve, they would have been given a code of one. If they disapproved, they'd been given a code of two. And then here I actually have the frequency distributions to see that um, for that question, 816 of the people said they approved, whereas 797 said they disapproved. So these, this documentation PDF is something that you are definitely going to want to look at probably even prior to jumping into a, an actual data file because it's going to give you the background that you need to be able to understand is this a data set that you're going to want to use for your own research. So I'm going to close this documentation file. So again, that was the documentation PDF, which actually also contained the codebook and the questionnaire. So I probably don't even need to open these separately necessarily to um, get, a, get more understanding because I saw all those in the documentation file. So the data is there and I can start looking at it. So let me minimize and go back to where here I was when I first downloaded that. So I'm going to click back to go back to the ICPSR data set record um, and I'm going to move on to another tab here called the variables tab. So the variables tab, this is a place where um, if I wanted to even before I download like that documentation file or that codebook file and I was just curious within this data set what variables for example had the word ethnic in the wording of the the um, variable I can do a keyword search click go and it's going to bring up a list of the different variables that have the word ethnic in it so it has a variable that the name of the variable is this weird abbreviation <laughs> but apparently it probably stands for race and ethnicity of the respondent now I could click on the that abbreviated variable name and it should yes it takes me to a view on the on um, ICPSR of this was the variable. It doesn't doesn't give me the actual um, wording of the question, but I can probably gauge from the ty types of um, labels um, and categories that people were asked, what race or ethnicity do you identify with? And these were their options, white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, etc. And it tells me, um, again, how many people answered each of those ways. Um, so this option, let me click back to go back to the data set record, of using a variables tab to explore your variables possibly even before you download the data set and the documentation is very nice because it can give you a sense of what types of questions or variables um, were collected for this data set. So you know here's another question, um, how important is it for you that a candidate is your race and ethnicity? Um, so there's lots of questions in this data set, not, probably not surprisingly, that are focused on ethnicity or race because um, it is an, a study that was focused on American identity and if we actually go back to the at a glance tab and go into the summary again we can get a sense that they are particularly interested in how American identity per more specifically probably racial ethnic or national origin group identity affects people's sense of whether they are or are not being represented by um, their politicians. So that was the variable tab lets you explore a little bit variables in a particular data set. Next I'm going to go to the data related publications tab.
So what this is, is ICPSR, the group, they, when they receive a data set from a principal investigator or from a researcher, they um, ask those researchers to provide them with, well, what are some publications that have been linked to or have used this data and then they also do some of their own research then later to follow up on like later publications that might have used this data. So for example in these listed publications um, the this one 2005 these couple of 2016s you'll may um, notice the main author is this person named Deborah J. Schildkraut and she is the principal investigator. So these three publications are um, publications, scholarly articles that she um, published that use this data set. And then there is one other set of some researchers here that they apparently published something using this data set as well. So why might this be useful to you? Um, anytime you're going to use somebody else or uh, an existing data set or what is sometimes referred to as a secondary data set, it can be very helpful to see how have others used this data previously. What type of research did they do with it? Um, it's particularly useful and relevant if you're wanting to use it and you want to do something different or new that hasn't been done with it before, well then you need to see what have other people done with this data. So these publications, data related publications, will um, help you follow that trail of how this data has been previously used. So one other part of this data set record that I want to show you is this option that says analyze online. So some of these data sets will allow you to do some initial analysis online um, before you have to take that step of downloading it and using a software like Stata or SPSS or R or whatever, SAS, whatever your preferred software is. So if I click on this Analyze Online button. It's going to tell me the couple options I have. So there's this thing called Full Analysis Capabilities, which has a lot more options for doing analysis. And then there's um, this other one called Frequency slash Crosstabs, by, powered by StatSnap, um, that has um, some other features not quite as advanced or full as this Full Analysis Capabilities. So I want to demonstrate this uh, frequencies and crosstabs just so you can get a taste for what you might use this for. So let me click on that. Um, similar to when I downloaded the data, because I'm going to be using it in this data, ICPSR wants to make sure you're using it ethically, um, appropriately citing people, and so on. So terms of use comes back up. I'm going to click the I agree button. And now I'm in um, this place um, where I can begin some initial exploration of my data online. So I'm going to try out uh, this option called the cross tabs option, where I want to show you how I might run a simple cross tabs on a couple variables to begin exploring this data. So I did some initial exploration to find a couple variables I was interested in and I found their variable names. So I just copied in one of those. And you can tell again from the variable name itself ugh, it is not intuitive at all what that question was. But luckily underneath, once I copy that in, it shows me, it says, the people in the data set were, um, or in this study were asked, when someone in a different state gets elected to Congress and that person is your race or ethnicity, do you tend to think, of that person as someone who represents you or does that person only represent his or her own voters? So I'm curious to see um, with ways people ask this question how their race or ethnicity might have influenced how they answer this question. So are 
white's more likely to answer it in a certain way as compared to Hispanic or compared to blacks and so on. So I'm going to take this question and I'm going to click on this option here. It says row so I can add it over here in the row variable to be the row, um, the different rows of my cross tabs. And then I'm going to find the variable that asks people about their race and ethnicity. So here again, I did some initial research to find out that this was the name of the variable. And here it says race or ethnicity. So I'm going to add that now to the column variable by clicking this little call link. So now I can see over here on the side, it tells me these are going to be my column and row variables. And before I run my cross tabs, I'm also going to ask it to checkbox to give me column percentages. And I also want a bar chart generated with this. So now I'm going to click run. And down below now, it has generated this um, nice cross tabs um, comparison where it's showing me in my rows the two different app options that people could have answered for that question of when someone in a different state gets elected to Congress and the person is your race or ethnicity, do you tend to think of that person as someone who represents you or does that person only represent his or her own voters so people could say I think that person represents me or they could say I think that person only represents his or her own voters and then we have a breakdown of how people answer that depending on whether they are white non-hispanic black non-hispanic other non-hispanic or hispanic or two plus races non-hispanic um, and because I asked it to generate column percentages along with the actual counts of the number of people, um, it also has percentage. So I can now use this, this initial online analysis um, to kind of feel out uh, maybe I had a hypothesis that somebody's race would have some kind of influence on how they answer this question. So I can start comparing maybe the um, percentages particularly to see, for example, that those who identified his, as Hispanic, almost 50% of them thought that even though that Congress person was in a different state, that they would still represent them. Um, whereas many of the other ethnicities many or much lower percentage thought that that person would represent them where it seems like if they said no I think that person only represents his or her own voters in her own or his or her own state we see that there are much higher percentages within white black non-hispanic and other non-hispanic as compared to Hispanic so our initial kind of conclusion might be if somebody identifies as Hispanic, then they seem to possibly think that the um, representative, if they are of the same race as them, so if they are Hispanic, even though from an, they're from an, another state, they're still going to be looking out for other Hispanics in other states. Whereas these other races and ethnicities seem to be like, no, that person's more about their own state and it's not, you know, their race or ethnicity just because they're the same as me. I don't think they're going to have a special interest in my interests because I'm not from their state. Um, so that's uh, cross tabs. Um, it didn't run any kind of statistical significance test, so I would need to probably take this into something like state or SPSS to really do some analysis to make a determination of, you know, is there really a statistically significant difference or relationship, I should say, between um, race, race and ethnicity and how they answer this question. But it gives me initial um, thought that there might be. Um, and then if I scroll down, I asked it to generate a bar chart too, so I have a visual representation of that data in that table as well. So this online data analysis option that I used can be very useful for initial exploration of some of the variables in a data set before you go 
um, fully commit to downloading and um, analyzing the data in a so certain software. So I'm going to click back on here until I get back to my ICPSR record. So I'm back at my ICPSR record. Um, as far as other things that are present in this um, record, uh, most of them I think are not not things that I need to focus on at the moment. I just wanted to make sure that you noticed those key things that I've already covered. So this I found by doing just some browsing by topics. I'm going to click on find data here and go back to that initial find data page where I'm going to show you that in that browse area as um, well as the option of topics which I just used a moment ago there are other options to browse by series so series are um, usually like multi-year studies where they've collected data across time so if you're interested in longitudinal or time series data you might look in here there's also thematic data collections that you might look into as well like I'll, I'll click on that one just to give you an option or sense of how does that differ from topics and it's mainly um, a lot of it is it's data that um, is from different statistical agencies or foundations and they've organized the data by the foundations or organizations that they've gotten the data from. So when I clicked on thematic data collections, uh, for example, um, if you're interested in data about national addiction HIV data, there is you know this particular archive that you're going to find data there. Um, if you're interested in criminal justice data, there's the National Archive of Criminal Justice Data who make their data available through ICPSR. So the thematic data collections is just kind of another way that ICPSR is trying to group data um, for you so you might be able to easily browse for some of that data. Um, and then in this browse area as well, there are some other options you can he see here, but I also wanted to point out the browse by subject term option. So I'm going to click that for a moment. So you can see that that pops you into a, a, an alphabetical list and you can switch to different um, parts of the alphabet where you could browse by data that has been tagged with certain subject terms. Um, so if you're this is very topical right now. If you're really interested in data sets that are talking about absentee voting, um, you know, you can see that there are actually three different subject headings that are in relation that might be attached to a data set that has some kind of focus on absentee voting. There's absentee ballots, absentee voters, absentee votes. So that subject term or browse by subject terms option which was again in the browse area on the find data page and right here might be another way to kind of hone in on um, data that might be of interest to you. And then of course there is always the option to um, just do a keyword search. <laughs> so um, if I wanted to do a keyword search, I'll show you before I go into a keyword search that there is this little um, search tips um, menu that I can expand where ICPSR is trying to give you some sense of how to go about searching or keyword searching in ICPSR. Um, so you might look into that. But you know, I'm going to start with something pretty simple. I'm just going to search for the word economics. Uh, click go. And then I will see that um, within the, the ICPSR data set records, I searched, you know, keyword searched in those and I got over 9,000 results that mentioned something about economics. So, you know, there's a lot of resource or sorry, data sets that mention economics. Um, I can always add more keywords in to kind of hone um, my search some. I do want to show you that you may notice in these some of these research res or search results that came up that there are some um, data sets that have a little icon that says open ICPSR next uh, to them. So um, 
let me, I'm just going to show you one of those. Um, I'm going to pick this, this data set called Ideological Polarization and Res Retrospective Economic Voting, because I'm kind of into this notion of ideology and identity and how it affects voting. Um, so I'm going to click on this one, find out more about it. And it is an open ICPSR data set. So you'll notice when I get here, the data set record looks very different from the other ICPSR record that I showed you. And that is mainly just because this open ICPSR data is, um, it is data that is, is available to anyone, anywhere. Whereas data that's just in the normal ICPSR um, database is only available to people who are members or who are students, faculty, staff at an ICPSR subscribed institution like Georgia State. Um, so this data, by contrast, because it's in open ICPSR, is available to anybody. And then the basic organization of the um, data set record is just a little different. Um, this one again, we've got the, we've got the data available right here. It looks like it's a state of file, so we're going to be able to download it. Um, there's this option that says download this project. You're going to be able to download this data and use it, uh, but it's just going to look a little different from what you saw in the regular ICBSR. But some things are are um, have kind of common structure. So there's a summary here that tells us. Um, economic voting in which voters reward or punish incumbents for the state of macroeconomic conditions varies in its impacts on U.S. presidential elections over time. So then this person wrote a, a paper talking about this concept or this notion and they made their data available for other people to use it. So you, I should be able to download this project and be able to use it right away. But um, that was an open ICPSR record. So again, looks a little different than regular ICPSR. Um, but it's data readily available for it to use. Um, and if it's something that you're interested in, go for it. So now I'm going to show you um, what I've shown you is how you can browse for and kind of keyword search for data, data sets. Now I want to show you how, if you're interested in finding data sets that have particular variables in them or particular questions were asked of people on a survey, for example, you can, for many of the data sets in, in ICPSR, search down to that individual variable level. And you can do that using this feature that's called search slash compare variables. So I'm going to click on here where it says search slash compare variables. It's going to take me to the search slash compare variables <laughs> search page. And so here I can, for example, um, maybe I'm interested in finding data sets where people were asked the question, how liberal or conservative are you? So kind of getting a gauge of people's levels of liberalism or conservatism conservativism. <laughs> so let me, I just put keywords in there to try to search for variables that contain these words. So I'm going to click go. And here it's searched and it has found um, 5,573 results. So lots of results. It's showing me that there are 2,076 individual studies in which variables contain both the words liberal and conservative. And there's actually um, 5,573 um, individual variables. But then what I see below here are some of my initial um, variables that it found. So I'm going to do, um, oh actually before I start looking at these, I also want to just, um, I've decided that I want to limit my time period on um, 
when these variables um, or when the data set may have been collected. So maybe I'm interested in looking at data sets that are no older than um, having been collected in or, or added to ICPSR in the year 2000 and I'm going to say through the end of the year um, 2018. So I have those in here, and now it's it's winny, winnowed <laughs> those uh, the amount of variables that I've found down a bit, and now I'm curious to compare a couple of these variables. So I'm basically wanting to kind of shop around for how do people ask the question about liberal and conservative. So I'm going to pick a couple of these. So I'm going to checkbox this first one. Um, variable name is k underscore 38 and then I'm going to pick another one and of course you know I I looked into these ahead of time um, I'm going to pick this one called the variable name is f1q1 you can see that a lot of times researchers aren't very nice to us in terms of actually naming their variables with something that you can understand um, but we've got these two variables now I'm going to click this compare button so I can compare them with this feature. Oh, there we go. It's things are above here. So what you'll see is this first row of com my comparison is the variable that was called K338. Um, basically labels liberal conservative. Um, the question people were asked they don't give us full wording, but they were probably asked you consider or on a scale from probably one to seven, where do you uh, place yourself in terms of being liberal or conservative? So this particular question, um, you can see, so I'm in this responses area, that the people involved in the study were able to pick on a scale from one to seven um, whether they were extremely liberal, liberal, slightly liberal, moderate or middle of the road, oops, slightly conservative, conservative, or extremely conservative. And then they apparently had the option to also say, I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> um, and then they also had the option to refuse to answer. They could also say, I don't know. And then there were probably a few, like 10, within this study um, that the individual cases, there was missing data for some reason. So maybe they just skipped that question altogether. Um, so this question, we have kind of a more, a larger range on a scale from 1 to 7 as to um, how people rated themselves on that scale. And then by comparison, this other question in a totally different study um, where people were asked when it comes to politics, would you describe yourself as liberal, conservative, or neither liberal nor conservative? They were given only three options. They could say, I'm liberal, they could say, I'm conservative, or they could say, I'm neither liberal or nor conservative, or they do have, again, they people may have said they didn't answer. Um, this unit non-response option is probably that maybe they, within a bigger sample, that this particular study only asked a subsample of the question, so they left about a thousand people out from the question altogether, and um, so on. So why might you use this search slash compare variables option. Well, one, it helps you um, shop around for variables that meet kind of the, the requirements that you would like for your um, data that you're going to use to have. So if you're, you decide, well, you know, I want a study that gives people more nuanced responses for whether they're liberal or conservative. I want them to have this more of a larger spectrum to be, go from um, across these seven categories versus a question where they're only given three categories. Then you may be more inclined to be like, well, maybe this data set is more appropriate for what I want to do. Um, 
But then one other thing we need to look for if, if you're using this as a way to shop around for data sets is that you need to look then at this study information to get a sense and particularly um, the time period the data was collected and this universe to get a sense of the um, particular sample or universe or population of the data set. So for example, you know, this question, I might like it because it has seven options for people to talk about how liberal or conservative they are. But one thing and now I'm kind of like, yeah, but I don't know if I want to use the data is if I look at the title of it, I see that it says it's a Detroit area study and Chicago area study and from the year 2004. And over here in the um, universe, it tells me that this population of this study were adult residents of Detroit and Chicago. Um, now if my real keen interest was just in those areas this would probably be a great data set for me but if I was like eh, I kind of you know I want to know more of like what do people across the United States think well then I might move to this other study which is a part of the American National Election Study. Um, this particular data was from 2010. Um, it may, there may be more recent data because American National Election Studies is part of a series that gets asked um, or data gets collected pretty regularly. Um, but it also is a sample from um, all United States citizens. So it's a sample of all, all United States citizens. But if you've taken statistics classes, you've probably learned, you know, that there are sampling procedures where you try to do a random sample and try to collect a representative sample um, or used other sampling procedures to try to collect a representative sample of the entire U.S. population. So this may be more appropriate if you're more interested in the full U.S. population versus just people who live in the Detroit and Chicago area. Um, so this was the search and compare variables uh, feature that can be very useful as a way to kind of shop around for specific data sets where you are very interested in specific variables. So now I'm going to uh, go back to the find data page again. And I want to point out one other um, type of data that you're going to sometimes find in ICPSR, and that is restricted use data. So I'm going to show you one particular study that I know is restricted use data to give you a uh, you know, an exposure to what a data set record looks like that is restricted use. So I'm going to actually use this option of browsing by topics again. And I'm going to go to that same category I went to before, mass political behavior and attitudes. And I'm actually looking specifically, yes, for this data set. It's called 2012 Latino Immigrant National Election Study, or LINES for short. ICPSR number is 36680. So I'm going to click on this. It will take me into the data set record. At first glance, most of this will look pretty similar to what we've already seen. But you may notice, for one, Obviously, ICPSR is trying to gain your attention <laughs> by showing you on the right-hand side in the notes area, highlighted in bright red, it says one or more files in this data collection have special restrictions. And that restricted data files are not available for direct download from the, the website. And it's telling you to click on the restricted data button to learn more about well, what would you have to do to possibly get access to this restricted data. So here is this button, access restricted data. I'm going to click on it. And it gives me an initial sense of, again, says some of these files are restricted, so you're not going to be able to download them right away. And it gives me an initial feel of what is it going to take for me to get my hands on this data. And you may remember the beginning of the tutorial, this video, I said that 
restricted data is pretty much not um, a restricted data set is something that you're not going to want to consider if you're working on just a semester long or course project assignment, particularly if you're an undergraduate. Um, but even probably graduate level because in order to get access to this data you have to go through a pretty rigorous process you have to have a faculty member who will basically sponsor you to get access to this data um, you have to get IRB approval which is human subjects approval you have to go through all this training saying you're you know how to be to ethically use this data there are a lot of hoops and obstacles that really are not something that anybody who's just trying to do a semester project is going to want to try to jump through. Um, so I'm going to hit close and I'm just going to say this particular data set, if I were just in a regular class, semester long project, would not be accessible for me to use. Now to give you a sense of, well, why do, why does ICPSR, you know, restrict data sometimes? So why they typically restrict data is that there's usually something about the nature of the data that is um, a combination of very sensitive data or that there may be parts of the data that if somebody pieced these individual parts together, they may be able to identify individuals who took part in the study. Because most data that's collected for research studies um, you know, participants are guaranteed anonymity and they're guaranteed their privacy, they're guaranteed their confidentiality, they're guaranteed that there will be no identifiable information attached to any of their answers, which means that it won't have their names, but there may be other pieces of information that is collected about those people who may, which may, those other pieces or other variables may be kind of, um, you know, put together like a puzzle and then suddenly somebody may be able to figure out who this person was. Um, so this particular data set, my theory of as to why it's probably been considered restricted, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. So this data set, as it says at the, sum, at the first sentence of the summary, is it says um, it is a nationally representative telephone survey of Latino immigrants, the majority of whom were not U.S. citizens. That right there, not U.S. citizens, were not U.S. citizens, is probably a big reason that this data is restricted because, you know, these are people participating in this this study are a vulnerable population. That is sensitive information that they are not U.S. citizens. Um, so there's that piece that is probably one component of why this is restricted. And another piece combined most likely with this piece of it including a lot of people who were not U.S. citizens is probably when we start looking at the, this piece here, smallest geographic unit. So what does that mean? Um, I clicked on the I, it's actually giving me like all the options for the different geographic units, which isn't super helpful in, in itself. But what this particular um, description is telling me is that this data, the data in this, um, the people who participate in this data set, that information of what census tract they lived in was collected. Now if you're not familiar with what is a census tract, basically a census tract is, um, indicates basically what neighborhoods somebody might live in. So within, um, you know, Atlanta, if somebody was a participant from Atlanta, it would not just say that this person was from Atlanta, but it would have the specific census tract number in which they lived. So the neighborhood in which they lived. So now we have two pieces of information, where somebody lived down to basically their neighborhood level and that many of the people participating in this study were not U.S. citizens. The combination of those two things that we might be able to put together, figure out where somebody lives, and that they're not U.S. citizens, makes the people in this study very vulnerable 
to possible abuses by researchers. Because of that, ICPSR has put these restrictions on here and they want to vet and really get a good sense that anybody that they give access to this data is going to use it ethically um, and morally and not do anything to endanger the participants um, by possibly revealing things about their citizenship status and or where they live. So that's why it's restricted. Now, again, if you um, if you were working on a project beyond a course project, I would say, you know, if this is data you're really interested in using, you can go through the application process to try to get access to the restricted data. And you would have to have, if you're a student, you would have to have a GSU professor who is basically the person that re requests it on your behalf. Um, but it is an option. And then once you would be approved to use that data, there are different, um, ICPSR will have different processes of how you might use that data. Um, but wanted to make sure I pointed that out, that there are these restricted data um, within ICPSR. So, that basically gives um, a kind of whirlwind tour of um, using ICPSR, the features of a data record you should be um, aware of, how you download the data, doing online analysis, searching, comparing variables, and so on. I will show you um, briefly before I conclude that I do have a, another um, guide that gives some helpful tips on using ICPSR. So I just typed the URL into the um, address bar here. It's research.library.gsu.edu slash ICPSR. Um, and if I go there, the guide page itself is just a one page guide that has some different boxes with some helpful information in it about um, creating your ICPSR accounts. Um, finding and downloading and installing the VPN access to particularly help you possibly with off-campus access to ICPSR and so on. And then there is actually also an interactive hands-on tutorial and then after I finish this recording I will probably put a link to this recording in this guide as well that these will then be a couple pieces that um, might help you further in kind of refreshing some of the things that you learned in this session today to use ICP ICPSR. So thank you very much and have a good rest of your day.